All right, hey, this is Norman Horn with LibertarianChristians.com, Libertarian Christian Institute. Uh, I'm doing something a little different today. We're going to try this, and if it turns out all right, it'll be fun. Um, so I'm basically going to give you some hot takes in the car here while I'm driving. I have uh, just finished up a little job. We're doing some injection molding at a local shop, and, uh, and it went really well. And I'm heading home. It is raining. It is December the 7th? of 2018 and uh, yeah just having a good time today and we'll see what happens uh, all right so what hot takes are available today well a couple things have been coming up um, things happening this week and uh, so for, for one uh, what I have recently become aware of an article uh, that came out by one Bruce Ashford at the Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary um, about the problem of libertarianism and uh, I guess an evangelical thought uh, for what it's worth um, and uh, this article uh, was made known to me by uh, a few different individuals, um, uh, from both from the people from the Christian Libertarian Facebook group and uh, just friends of ours. And uh, article's interesting off the top, I can tell you from just uh, my initial uh, reading, it was not great. It makes some misrepresentations of libertarianism right off the bat. Uh, it, can, it confuses some things. Uh, one of the things I thought was kind of funny in it uh, is, uh, is that it... it it describes like some different branches of, of of libertarianism, or supposedly, and talks about like Robert Nosick might give this principled description of libertarianism that's concerned with rights, uh, which was just funny because I didn't really haven't necessarily thought of uh, Robert Nozick as being one who was um, entirely principled in his approach uh, to the philosophy. Uh, and then there's you know then said and then there's Ludwig von Mises who brings a more utilitarian approach and economical approach, which was just kind of funny because. Everybody brings an economic approach, that's sort of the point, or it's a major point. And then you have, of course, the people that are more like Murray and Rothbard, who are anarchists, and they're, they're you know, they, they're unhinged, apparently, I guess. I don't know. I'm not really sure exactly what you meant there. Uh, one thing I thought was weird, though, in the article, and I think that, that this may actually be something I want to focus on in a, in a future article, uh, is that he describes um, libertarianism as, uh, you know, as a philosophy, and, and, and I've heard this multiple times from different people in, in kind of high up theological circles, where it says where liberty is the supreme political good, and, and it's stated in such a way like that's a really bad thing. Um, and this, is, this to me is kind of funky. I mean, if, uh, if I were to, for instance, um, say that, you know, in, in a certain subject that, uh, you know, uh, that something was the supreme X good of that of that subject. I mean, if it like, would you object? Uh, you, would you just object to it being there, or would you object to something deeper, like it's the wrong supreme political good? Well, that's the funny thing is that if, if he's trying to say that the supreme political good is incorrect, um, then he doesn't do a very good job of stating what it ought to be. Um, I was definitely confused by that presentation of the article. He makes a possible allusion to it when he says that liberty should be uh, should be uh, normed by some kind of objective moral order. And the funny thing is, is that like that's kind of what libertarianism is. I mean, if we if we're going to get down to what libertarianism is, it's a statement, an explication of the non-aggression principle, which is an objective moral order. Now, it doesn't; it's not all encompassing, but as it pertains to the political arena, it is what we focus upon. Um, so, if one is to say, well, there is an objective moral order, um, it, you know, and, and we and obviously as Christians we do say there is an objective moral order, but there are only certain parts of it which are uh, meant to be encapsulated within um, political uh, the political arena. Uh, we would obviously not say that despite the fact that it, it is objectively true that one ought to be a Christian, uh, we cannot force that in the political arena. Um, that, that doesn't make any sense. So I don't really feel that that, that objection of that liberty is the supreme political good is a very substantial objection to libertarianism in and of itself. Uh, so that's that's kind of a, a you know my, my initial take on that on that article. I know there's more to it, and I would like to address more, uh, but I'm going to leave it at that as a uh, because I think it's an interesting observation. I mean, uh, in and of itself, I mean that was something that even Al Mohler uh, brought up in the debate that he and I had 
uh, a few years ago. It would have been in early 2016, so it's been about two and a half years since that occurred. Uh, he made a similar kind of statement about, you know, uh, uh, literally using the same words about the supreme political good being liberty. And, uh, and I mean, that was one of the, uh, it wasn't the first time I'd heard it, but I was surprised that he kind of brought it up then. And I've only seen that become more prevalent in people's critiques of libertarianism over time. So there's that. Um, other things that, that are, you know, happening of late, uh, you know, for instance, uh, we recently, George H.W. Bush passed away. Uh, and there's, uh, you know, what I thought it was kind of funny that, um, uh, you know, first off that, you know, they had, they shut down a number of federal government offices as a result. Uh, so we can say that the last, perhaps the last, uh, the last great political act of George H.W. Bush was getting the federal government to shut down for a period of time. Uh, hot take, uh, but, uh, yeah, kind of funny. Um, but you know, uh, not to, not to speak ill of the dead per se, uh, that's not exactly fair to do and it's not exactly right, but it's not as if, you know, George H.W. Bush has some, uh, incredible legacy of wonderfulness that in the political arena, I'm sure, he, you know, uh, his, his, uh, ability and uh, as a father, uh, and whatnot is, is immaterial, uh, to, to the way we think about him as a, as a president and so on and so forth. Um, I don't have any particular stance on some of the things that, um, he's sometimes accused of, but certainly going to war, bad, uh, that was, you know, that's, that's a, a terrible thing, and that was, you know, I think that was even reflected in why he wasn't re-elected in 92, uh, you know, and lost to Bill Clinton. Uh, you know, if you watched the George W. Bush, uh, eulogy, um, it's, I mean, it's, it's interesting, you know, the eulogies are always interesting, and, and uh, I, I kind of wonder at times, we're kind of going back to, um, uh, Jason Rink, who's on our uh, the LCI board, uh, his speech from Christians for Liberty Conference a few years ago on uh, the religion of statism. Uh, I kind of wonder if you know when we start thinking about the uh, the funerals for former state leaders, whether or not that's almost on the verge of the, of the of a sacrament of the state as well. Um, and it's sad because you know he's. Uh, I mean, of course, all presidents are going to make claim to Christianity on some level and their, and their deep faith. Uh, they're always going to do that because that's just the way it is in America. It's part of the civil religion that you appeal to this stuff. But uh, anyway, I, I think that's interesting. Uh, that it's interesting the way that eulogies are written in general, uh, especially for, for people in like, uh, high positions such as this. Um, yeah, what else is going on? world today. Uh, lots of things, of course, uh, but I think that's a good place to stop for now. This is sort of an initial take or an initial shot at something that maybe I'll try to do more often as, as uh, short little videos like this. Uh, and, if, uh, and if you've been thinking all along, what in the blazes is that thing on Norman's head? Uh, well, this is, my, this is my awesome, this is actually one of the best headsets for uh, doing conference calls and whatnot for my cell phone that I ever had. I use it for business all the time and the quality is amazing. And my hope is that it will have actually recorded this through this microphone and we'll see how good it is and if it's not. Um, you know, this car is also really old, so I'm not exactly looking forward to the possibility of this video being extremely shaky, um, but we're gonna figure out if that works or if it doesn't. But for what it's worth, here's a, this is our first Hot Takes video. Um, maybe we'll give it a different name at some point or another, but for now, it's the Hot Takes video for LCI. Take one and we're out.